Very warm greetings again in the very blessed name of our risen Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Let us turn our Bibles to Joshua chapter 8. Joshua chapter 8. Now we have read a very long passage. This passage now shows to us the victory of the children of Israel over I. We just recalled their dismal fleeing and defeat from the people of Ai. Now, prior to that, we had the record that 36 men died and the remaining of the soldiers, the 3,000, were chased by the people of Ai. But yet, in this particular chapter, we read of great victory. Why is it so? Is it because they had more people? Is it because now they took 30,000 people? Is it because now they have an ambush plan? Is it because they were more creative in their battle strategy? Is it because of that that they had victory? Now, sometimes in life, it's like that. We fail the first time. And then we think, well, if I try harder, I, I have a better plan. Now, we studied last week about human responsibility. We must plan. We must act. But we can begin to think it is because of more resources, more detailed planning, more strategy, better execution. Therefore, we succeed the second time. The children of Israel were very clear. Joshua was very clear. God made it very clear that it was not any of these things mentioned. You look at chapter 8, verse 1. God told Joshua that I have given into thy hand the king of Ai and his people and the city and his land. God says he is the one. Although God says, yes, have an ambush plan. But the ambush plan is just as dismal and would fail, just like the first time, if not for the fact that God says, I will give it to you. Let us not ever think the second time that we tried and we succeeded is because we did better. We must do better. But we must not think it's because of that. Whether it is in your studies, whether it is in your work, whether it is in leading your family, whether it is in something in life. Always remember, I have given you. It is whether God would give. Now, notice that God in chapter 8 verse 1 says, take all the people of war with you. And then he says, go. What is God saying to Joshua? You have failed the first time. The people have failed the first time. But I want you to go again. Try again, the second time. And verse 8, chapter 8, verse 2, And thou shalt do, you go and do. But what will be done, you will be able to subdue, defeat these people just like you did so. Or rather, God did so for them at Jericho. God told them to go again. This was Israel's Second chance. Today's title is uh, The God, Our God of Second Chances. Now, God did not put them aside because of the first failure, the first disobedience. Our God is a God that gives us chances. This must encourage and strengthen us. He knew that Joshua was fearful. He knew that Joshua was dismayed. He was crumbling. We felt so miserably. Isn't that how we feel sometimes? Maybe you look back in your life. God, I feel so miserably. As a senior now, I look back in my life. I failed you so many times in so many areas. Then we, then we get very discouraged. Know that God is a God of second chances. Maybe in your life, you know that you have made 
a terrible choice in life. You committed a certain sin in your younger days. And you think that, well, God will now put me aside. I'm no longer of use to him. Joshua was worried. He was fearful. He was dismayed. God came and said, second chance, second opportunity, go. This time you will succeed. We want to have second chances in life, don't you? At work, maybe you did something wrong, terribly wrong, and you're afraid that your boss will fire you. You know it's your fault. The children of Israel know the fault light with, light with them, with Achan, that brought trouble to them. And you hope and pray the whole night. I hope that my boss will give me another chance. Maybe students, you failed. I said, please don't say I failed. Exams is just now. Maybe because of your failure to prepare. Yes, you failed. And you think, well, God, please give me another chance when I take the papers again. Please, God, give me another opportunity at my second attempt. Maybe it's your family and you failed the Lord. And say, Lord, please help me. I want to change. But God, will you help me? Yes, God says a second chance. Now, we want to learn a few things about second chances. When I say second chance, it's not, it may not literally be second. All right? God may give us many chances. But we must learn when God gives us another attempt at something. Learn from this passage. My friend, have you, are you discouraged? Have you almost like given up? Have you wondered? Have you been wondering? Then learn from this passage by the grace of God. Number one, we need to learn why God will give them a second chance. Because it's Lord, I want a second chance. We need to learn. Now, what was the second chance for? Then we want to learn from this passage. How should I respond now that I know my God is a God of second chances? How should I respond? Now, firstly, why did God say, Joshua, don't fear, don't be dismayed. Arise and go. Second chance. Why did God say that? Because immediately before that, they dealt with the sin in Israel. They dealt with sin quickly, totally, according to what God said. God said, this is how you will deal with this person. They did it exactly. They did not do it half-heartedly and, and return and repented with half-heartedness. They dealt with sin. The only reason why God gives us second chances, or again and again, is because we would repent. We would turn away. We would deal with the sin. Now, it's the same as a person, personal. It's the same for a family. It's the same for the church. We studied about church discipline. When we, when we learned about how God disciplined Israel, this is about discipline. When we don't deal with sin, don't keep thinking, oh, the title is God of Second Chances. God will always give me second chance. Students, don't keep thinking. Well, you know, I, I just need to pray. God is a prayer answering God. He will give me second, a second chance. Or you think that God will always give me second chances, and then you go ahead and sin. Don't be so foolish to think that. The title, God, Our God of Second Chances, is to remind our God gives second chances based on repentance, dealing with sin. A church that does not deal with sin is not going to prosper. A family that does not deal with sin, don't expect that you may keep having second chances. But here, God encourages Joshua, you have done the right thing. 
Those of you who think that God has maybe put me aside, of no use to my family, no use to myself, no use to others, no use to the church, don't feel that way. If you're willing to deal and repent, God will use you. Now I've seen people and known people who have either out of ignorance or willful disobedience committed grievous sin in their younger days. And when they repented, when they truly dealt with it rightly according to how God wanted it to be dealt with, they did not fear the shame, they did not fear the consequences, they just dealt with it. I've known many in the ministry and how God in their second chance used them in very mighty and wonderful ways. So my friends, if you feel that, yes, I failed my family, yes, I've done many sinful things as an individual in my younger days, don't be discouraged. Deal with sin. Deal with sin. Now, when the children of Israel dealt with sin, you have to know that they did not do it half-heartedly. All right? You want second chances? It, is not, it was not a half-hearted um, um, action. What they did was to stone, to burn. You must be very, um, shouldn't use the word vicious, but when it comes to dealing with sin, be very serious. Some of us, we deal with, we want second chances and we drag our feet. We don't deal with it quickly. We don't deal with it seriously. Second chances are not automatically given. Don't think it will just happen. But learn from here. They were serious, so was God. Go, go up. Arise, go up to I, in chapter 8, verse 1. So that is why God gives second chances. Now then we have to ask ourselves, what is the second chance for? Students, may you, maybe you failed some papers, and then you beg God, God, I promise, God, I promise, I'll study harder. Help me, help me. Um, why do you want God to give you a second chance? Maybe you sin and something happened and then you say, God, please help me. I've learned my lesson. You even say that. Give me another opportunity to make it right. Restore the thing. Restore my job. Restore my health. Whatever it is. You can say, God, please, please, one more chance. One more chance. Why do you want another chance? Why did God give them this? What was God's purpose for them in giving them a second chance? Now the answer is obvious. It was never, conquering the land was never about giving Israel land, giving Israel a good life in a land flowing with milk and honey. I hope we have that very clear in our minds when we read the Bible. It was always about God's covenant. When Achan committed the accursed sin, look at chapter 7, verse 15. Chapter 7, verse 15. What was really the sin? I keep reminding ourselves. And it shall be that he that has taken, is taken with the accursed thing shall be burnt with fire, he and all that he hath. Why? Because he hath transgressed the covenant of the Lord. It is always about God's covenant. The reason, the purpose why God says, I will give you a second chance now that you have dealt with sin. It's not because, yeah, you deal with sin now, I will bless you. No, it is because you now have a second chance in fulfilling my purpose. It is a second chance to be useful to God, to have that privilege to be still used by him in his covenantal purpose. So students, 
God, give me one more chance, one more chance. Why? Why? So that you pass and that's it. You won't be scolded by your parents so that you will get um, something from your parents so that you're not ashamed in school. No, the purpose is always to ask yourself, what do I want to make out of God giving me a second chance? You want to be restored at work. You want, to be, you want to be restored to be able to lead your family. For what? To lead them to Christ. To be a better testimony at work. Never about the end purpose of men. So the whole problem with Achan was that he wanted things for himself, for his own pride, for his, his own pleasure, for his own um, um, comfort. That is all. The children of Israel's purpose in God giving them victory over their enemies and therefore they can take the land is that they will then be their God's witness in this land to the nations around them by the way they live their lives when God gives them the second chance. Please remember that. Maybe you've been praying for something and you say, Lord, please give me this opportunity. You have to ask yourself, why? Why, Lord, am I praying this? Change our prayer that comes out of our heart. Lord, restore this. Lord, answer this prayer. Because I do not want to be useless to you. Can you begin to imagine your whole life set apart for God? Or your whole life just set apart? That's all. Useless. Not the children of Israel, their desire was not simply to win the victory. This was a good generation. They understood that. That's why, except for Achan, everyone else obeyed God to the dot in Jericho. It was a good generation. God gave them a second chance. So please remember that. The Christian must have a radical change of our thinking once and for all. Lord, my life is for your use. Infant baptism that just occurred. Parents, why do you want to infant baptize your child? It's to tell God, Lord, I don't want to fail you. Please use me to bring up this child of yours for your kingdom. Please help me. Why do you study? Why do you want a job? Why do you want health? All this, that Lord, I will be useful to you. The greatest fear a Christian must have is always to fear being useless to God. But again, the encouragement is God says, I am a God of second chances. Now we learn also, my friends, God has given you, if you're not a believer, listening in or present here, many chances to hear the gospel, many chances to respond to him. God has given you again and again the understanding of how to be saved, that you're a sinner, but you keep ignoring those chances. Here, we learn next what how must we respond? Knowing that if we deal with sin, God will give us the chance again. Knowing that the chances are given so that we will continue to be used by him for his purposes, not to live for ourselves. Now with that clear in mind, then let us see from this passage, how should we respond? What should we do? Well, look at what the children of Israel did when they were given a second opportunity. Now, the first thing is that we must treasure, appreciate the second chance given. The moment Joshua heard, God says, Arise and go up to I. Take the people, the army with you. Was Joshua dragging his feet? All right, I think, you know, the people just lost. I think they should be quite discouraged. And I'm quite kind of tired with handling all these problems. Maybe we'll do it next week. 
No, Joshua immediately commanded the people, immediately gathered the people. Why? Because he knew. Second chance, God says go. He couldn't wait to jump on it. Do you treasure second chances? Sometimes we are so blind. We are so um, unappreciative that God says, I'm long-suffering. You repented. Here is the opportunity to make things right. But we seem to can't be bothered. We don't do anything. Good, God has given me a second chance. Well, I just relax about it. Joshua could say, well, then, well, maybe we go conquer something else. No, he was very specific. He got up, got the people gathered. And what did Joshua himself do? To Joshua, second chance to lead the people to do God's work in the land. Look at verse 9. Joshua therefore sent them forth. So he sent. Now what did he do? Joshua lodged that night among the people. He did not drag his feet. He immediately acted. And he personally started to do something with this second chance. Do we? You say, Lord, I want to lead my family better. Lord, I want to be a more Christ-like person at work. God, I want, yes, I've done this and that. God, I want to now change. Joshua went there at night, immediately started to work. Have you immediately started to put plans? We studied last week, human responsibility. You say, Lord, I want, in my old age, I want, as a young person, I want, as a family person, I want to do something about my life for you. Have you done, have you act, began to really do something? It's because we don't appreciate. Sometimes parents give the children a second chance, but the, chance, but ch but the child can't be bothered. When we treasure, we will act. That is how we must respond. If we truly treasure, we will act. Now, he, he did that by night. And now, look at what he did after that. Verse 10, immediately God says, Now, in the night he went there. And verse 10, and Joshua rose up early in the morning. He made every good use of the time that he had in the second chance. Have you done anything since last week when we studied about human responsibility? Put any things in place? Any change as an individual? Have you started to do your quiet time? Have you started to pray really at home? Have you started to do family worship? Have you started to say, I resolve to study God's word and do something about it? Joshua rose up early in the morning. Now, verse 11, And all the people, even the people of war, were with him, went up. This is verse 12. And he took about 5,000 men. You see, not only he would not be wasting time sleeping, and, and I'm not saying sleeping is wrong, but he immediately worked and worked hard. And he took... He started to act. He did something quickly. And then, verse 15, And Joshua and all, the is and all Israel made as if they were beaten. Joshua led the people. I've seen families who have made mistakes in the past, who want to now make things right with God. They repented, they dealt severely, made very big changes in their personal lives, in their family lives, just like the children of Israel here. They made big sacrifices, changes that were serious. How serious are you with your second chances? When you are, God says, I will give you victory. I will help you. But the thing is, most of us, we are not like Joshua. We don't make use of it. We're not serious about it. So that's one. 
they acted. And when they acted, how did they act? Now they took very serious um, steps. This battle plan that Joshua had, it can backfire. The enemies, they could still defeat them. Joshua had to exercise faith in God. When you are given second chances, you still need to do something. Sometimes those things put you and your family at risk. May be very uncomfortable and you may become fearful. Oh, but Joshua just went ahead, trusting in the Lord, doing what he needed to do, enduring, not easy. When they had the people on the back hiding, Joshua from the north trying to um, lead the people out of Ai, when the people started to follow, started to chase, Joshua was in the valley. You try to put yourself in his position. You failed before. Maybe some of you feel that. Lord, I failed before. And you're running in the valley. And you see the enemies coming. There can be a lot of doubts, many doubts, many fears. But notice that another thing we must learn in second chances, when God gives them, make use of it, act. But see how Joshua responded. Look at verse 17. There was not a man left in Ai or Bethel, and that went not out after Israel. And they left the city open and pursued after Israel. So this is full force pursuit. When you take second chances that God gives you, don't be surprised that you may be facing full force, discouragement, great um, challenges that will come at you. How should you respond in this second chance? You know, some say, once bitten, twice shy. I got bitten by a dog once. I went to a friend's house and the dog bit me. Now, after that, I was afraid of people's dog for a long time. For a long time. Once bitten, twice shy. Yes, Joshua, in, giving, in second chances, we can feel once bitten the second time. We are afraid. We shy away from the challenge. But look at verse 18. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Stretch out the spear that is in thy hand toward I, and I will give it into thine hand. The reminder again. Second chances, whether you succeed or fail, God says, I am the one. Joshua has been doing many things now in his second chance. But again, it is the encouragement that God says, I will give you success. And what did Joshua do? Joshua, what did he do? He did as exactly as what God told him to do. He did that and the people came around. So Joshua led or distracted the enemy. Everyone came out after them. And when he raised his spear, the rest of the people that were ambush, ambushing them from the back, they burned the city. And then Joshua saw the smoke go up. And now Joshua and his people will turn around and the other ambush party will now sandwich the people in the middle, the enemies in the middle. Now it all sounds like, wow, great battle plan. Wow, you know, great, great work. Um, great strategy, but let us not forget, second chances, the success of second chances is human responsibility, but it's always the encouragement to know that God says, I will give success. Right? Always depend on God. Always still know that it is God. But the thing is, in responding, be obedient. Be obedient. How do we know that? Now, the success has come or at least the beginning of the success. That is how we are. Sometimes we begin to see the success and say, God is helping me. 
God is enabling me. There is a great chance in responding to second chances where we begin, we begin to disobey and do things our way, but not Joshua and, and the people. What did Joshua do? Whatever the Lord told him before that, he did exactly. So did the people. Now look at verse 22 at the end, so that they let none of them remain or escape. So great success. And the king of Ai, they took in verse 23, alive and brought him unto Joshua. Now look at what in verse 24, how obedient the people were in this second chance. They did not decide to do what they wanted to do. They were very obedient in the second chance. Look at verse 24. And it came to pass when Israel had made an end of slaying all the inhabitants of Ai in the field. Well, were they supposed to do that? Yes. They were told in chapter 8, verses 1 and 2. Thou shalt do unto Ai and the king as thou did unto Jericho. That's what they did in Jericho. They obediently did the same thing. In Ai, verse 24. Now they chased them until they were consumed. They chased and chased. They did not say good enough. God says do unto them as you did unto Jericho. Everyone was to be killed. They made sure of that. Now, please remember, this is not God randomly wanting people to be killed. We studied that. These were very wicked people that God for hundreds of years have given them many second chances many chances they would not repent in fact they had the worst kind of um of worship of idols sacrificing children and many very unspeakable gross sexual sins this is the kind of people that would repeatedly told by god repent repent but they would not so they are being judged by god for their sins understand that so none of them were to be alive and they obeyed how else did they obey please look in verse um, verse 27 only the cattle and the spoil of the city israel took for a prey unto themselves according unto the word of the lord which he commanded joshua according to the word of the lord they obeyed exactly this time god says only now you can only keep the spoil of the city that's the only thing you can do only the cattle and the spoil they did that. They made sure that everyone, the rest burnt. Look at verse 28. And Joshua burnt Ai. And verse 29. And the king of Ai. And the king of Ai. He hanged on the tree until eventide. Why all these details? In second chances, every one of them kept God's commandment exactly. The king was, in a way, emphasized here. The king of Ai, the king of Ai, the king of Ai was not spared. In those days, and probably today, um, generals loved to keep the king of the city they conquered as a means to show others that this king is, well, used to be so powerful, now I am more powerful. They keep them alive. Some will humiliate them in many ways, right? Maybe cut off um, their hands, their feet, but let them live as a sign of humiliation to the enemy. Their king is now under my humiliation. It's very common. Joshua could have that pride. You know, this time we won. The last time we lost. How embarrassing the last time. Now let's keep the king alive. That's why the mention of the king of I, the king of I repeated, is to let people know. Joshua was so obedient in second chances, he did not try to be creative. He did not try to say, now in second chances, well, I want to let people know how good I am. We can become proud in second chances. Don't be. If God gave you a second chance to pass your exam, don't be going around showing off. If God gives you a second chance to keep your job, don't go around acting like you are so clever. If God gives you a second chance now to lead your family, don't become proud over time. Because that is the great danger, my friends. Second chances are wonderful. But second chances in themselves 
have great opportunities for us to fall also. Some of you have been awakened by the Lord from your backsliding, you have returned. And you treasure that. I can see that. Some of you, God has delivered you from many illnesses and you've returned. It's wonderful. But it is very easy for us to forget to be obedient. But not Joshua and the people. It was a very good generation. Now what else must we learn besides besides appreciating, besides acting, besides making sure we continue in very, very um, specific obedience to everything that God says. And don't become proud. We must remember to persevere when you're given second chances. How do we know that? Now look at verse 26. For Joshua drew not his hand back, wherewith he stretched out the spear, until, huh, the key word, until he had utterly destroyed all the inhabitants of Ai, until his hand remained stretched forth with the spear, and he would not draw it back, maybe tired, maybe fearful, maybe proud, but all the while was focused until, again, in second chances, sometimes, in fact, it is very often very sad to see People over time, it could be one month, two months, three months, one year, two years, three years, maybe ten years. After that, go back to the same ways again. Did not persevere to really use the second chance for the Lord. Very sad. Learn to remember, Joshua drew not his hand back. No turning back. Don't ever think and entertain the thought of what you did before that caused the failure. Second chances tells us that there is a failure the first time. It could be because of your personal sin. Failure. It could be because of someone's sin in your family, someone's sin around you and caused you to have the problem. It could be something that someone else did in church that caused so much problems. And then God gave us a second chance. We got it right. And then we began to go back to the old ways again. Will you keep going on, those of you who you have been revived by the Lord? You came here to study. The word of God has refreshed you, awakened your soul, revived it. You've been consistent in this second chance that God, given you, God has given you, how long will you be like that? When you go back to your own country, will you still persevere? God brought you here. Many of you say, wow, I really thank God for the chance to study in Perth. I really thank God for bringing me to study His Word, and I've grown. But will you persevere when you go back? Maybe God has given you a second chance as, an, as a working adult, as a family man, family woman. How long? Major changes like Joshua acted, acted aggressively, took big, chan- took big decisions and made great changes. Not proud, very humble. But remember, remember, Second chances are given for us to keep making use of it till the day we die. Joshua did not draw back. Will you draw back one day? You may feel good. Lord, now look at my family. Now now look at my work at my place of work. Lord, look at my work as a student. I've changed, Lord. But it's easy to go back and not persevere. So that is a response that we must learn from this chapter. And then Joshua did that until, in verse 27, first according to the word, uh, verse 26, sorry, until, 
utterly destroyed all the inhabitants. Another thing to learn about the response is you and I must learn not only to persevere, but make sure, make sure there is no chance, nothing left that will cause you to be disobedient to God again. Nothing. Eradicate every trace of temptation to go back to that way. That is the only way to make sure you really move in your second chance. It is very sad that many do not make use of second chances. Maybe in your heart, very revived, very desirous. And then you say many things in your prayer to God and to others, but never took it. Just as sad as many over time are no longer walking with the Lord based on how they wanted to use their second chance. But it is never too late. I want to emphasize that. As long as you still have chances given by God, don't fail. Take it. Now, but with that, in second chances response, we also must have the right expectations. The right expectations. What do I mean by that? Now, don't think simply because God is a God of second chances. Then we presume upon God's graciousness. Don't think that just because God will give you and I second chances, there are no consequences. Because sometimes we think that, well, you know, like the past, God keep giving me second chance again and again. I will have second chance again with no consequences. The people that died, the 36 men that died, remain dead. The failure of Israel the first time had people really dying because of it. So don't think foolishly that God in giving chances will say all will be hunky-dory after this and all back to normal. David was, King David was giving second, given a second chance. When he repented, confessed, God did give him a second chance. It is forgiven, he was told. But he says there will be trouble in your house. Is it not true? Don't be so foolish to think, well, God is a God of second chances. Just do it and then I'm going to be all right again. David suffered miserably after that. The families that were infighting, killing, incest, all sorts of things. Yes, he was given a second chance still to be king of Israel and rule and God will use him. Don't be so foolish and say sin first, then ask for forgiveness and God will help again. Yes, God will use you again. But sometimes it may be, things may not be back to what it used to be. Second chances does not mean full restoration at times. When church exercise discipline, in fact, this is a continuation, continuation of church discipline. Church discipline is always to restore the person. God giving second chances after disciplining is to restore Israel to the privilege of serving him, useful to him. Now, but sometimes after church discipline, it does not mean that the person will be restored to everything that the person used to do. Because for certain sins, we can't restore the person back to that particular position, area of service. Same for your personal walk. Don't think that everything will be back to normal. There will be consequences and sometimes, yes, God will use you, but not to the extent that you would have had if you and I did not fail God the first time willingly, disobediently, stubbornly. All right, so the best is not to sin and say, wait for second chance, since he's a God of second chances. So God gave the children of Israel many chances 
Where is Israel today? Whereas in, is God using Israel as his witness, as he wanted to from the beginning, as he did when they were obedient? No. Israel is now temporarily set aside. Don't think that there are no consequences and don't think that things won't change. Yes, Israel will be restored one day, but another generation, not that generation that failed him again and again. So don't think now. In fact, I would say that certain sins have no second chance. Don't always think that it's second chance. Achan did not have a second chance. Israel, as a nation, did. Achan was God from the beginning said, turn to chapter 7. Verse 15, and it shall be, it shall be that he that is taken with the accursed thing shall be burnt with fire. What? Shall be given a second chance? No, shall be burnt with fire. He and all that he hath, because he hath transgressed in the covenant of the Lord, because he hath wrought folly in Israel. Don't keep thinking, and neither do I want you to be lulled into thinking God will always grant second chances. Because in Achan's case, he shall be. That is his end. Don't be foolish to think that while God is a God of second chances, I will always get the second chance. Israel may. The church may. Your family may. Now there are some of us who have this thinking. I've done it before. God gave second chance. I've done it again. Church gives second chance. A chance and chance and chance again. And then we take it lightly. We take it um, presumptuously. We don't appreciate it. It may be your last second chance. Now, if Achan was a believer, it would mean that as he was looking at the garment and the silver and the gold, if he is a believer, if he was a believer, the Holy Spirit according to the word of God, will always convict his children of sin. Especially something that is made so clear. Don't take. Are we like that? While we keep disobeying, and God sends the Holy Spirit to repeatedly convict, and we keep stubbornly brush it aside. We keep hearing messages, we brush it aside. We hear reminders, we hear warnings from God, from the church. You just keep brushing it aside. That may be your last second chance. If he was a believer, then he would have been given many chances before he took it. And God says, that's it. This will be the last time. You would not respond. Now, when we ask people to serve in church, I repeatedly tell session members, we do not know the heart of men. And we can only depend on God to reveal the heart of men. Should they do this? Should, they, should we put them up to do this or that? Only God knows. Now, you may think that I can pretend and I can ignore, but God is the one that is working, just like in Israel. God is the one singling out Achan. God is the one who will deal with Achan. God is the one who says, who will have, who will not have the chance again. Sometimes we have to pray. God, we are about to say, ask someone to do something. I cannot tell you the number of times. You ask the session members. We decided on something. But God will reveal. God will reveal by this way or that way. And then we have to decide. The person or rather, God has revealed the person's heart, the person's real convictions. And then we decide, no, we can't use. Not, it is not we who have just decided not to use. It's God who has said, no more chance for this person. You need to know who he is or who she is. That's it. Don't think that God will keep giving you the chance, the privilege to serve him. It may be the last. Now, on this, I want to say this. The children of Israel learn from this passage. Sometimes when an action is taken, 
Uh, like maybe, um, maybe dad chastise the son. And then the mother just walked in. And then the mother said, hey, wh- why do you cane the boy? No, 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 no. Then you st- say, why, why? Sometimes we do not know everything that is going on in the background. Sometimes it's the father who said, now I've told you many times, again and again, last week I gave you another chance, this week I gave you three more chances, and now that is it. I already warned you that I will chastise you. And I will take away this privilege from you. Hey, husband, why you don't let our son ride the bicycle anymore? Because I've told my son many times, and this will be no more chance for him. He's given many chance. Sometimes, what I'm trying to say, sometimes we do not know how many th- times God has given the person a chance. How many times the church has given the person a chance. How many meetings, how many emails, how many talks we have with, we've had with the person. Sometimes congregation do not know. And then when we have to do, take an action because we've gone through the five steps and the person still will not respond, then sometimes we have to remove. But sometimes we do not know. And they say, what, the, ch- the church is so harsh. Do you ever wonder why in this particular case, God says, call all the tribes present and God personally expose it and then God personally make sure that all of them know. Because God wanted them to know this is the person who have done this and have been warned. Don't think that when a church has to take certain action, don't jump very quickly to the conclusion that is harsh. We, we don't like to do church discipline. Know the background. Thankfully for that, God says this time, make sure you take the army. Last time only 3,000. Say now, take the army. Joseph brought 30,000. They individually needed to experience that when they dealt with sin, they personally were experienced. Now 30,000, not 3,000 like the last time. All 30,000 of fighting men will experience and will always remember for the future when we deal with sin. We will experience victory. They needed to experience that. And they obeyed Joshua. They did not fight with Joshua. Their relatives were there. Achan's relatives were there. The tribe was there. The clan was there. Sometimes when we have church discipline, what we fail to learn is to move on. They moved on. That is the lesson to learn. Instead of keep fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting, when the whole purpose of second chance is to move, as individuals, we don't take it. Or we become a cause that caused the church not to be able to move, that caused the family to not be able to move. Sometimes husband and wives, you must take consolidated decisions about things you need to do. You can't be divided on that. And when it's the right thing to do, then do it. Sometimes discipline is very difficult for the home. And after it is taken, stick with it. That is how you move on. Sometimes husband and wives quarrel, disagree, and then they won't take consolidated action. The family cannot move on. So I hope you understand that. Now, but finally, we must also remember, besides that there may not be second chance, like in Aiken's case, there may not, or it may not be the, or it may be the last chance already, or it may be that even if you're restored, it will not be full restoration. And things will change. Then, what to do? Look at what Joshua did very quickly, and we end. In verse 29, And the king of Ai, he hanged on the tree until eventide. And as soon as the sun was down, Joshua commanded that they should take the carcass down, his carcass down from the tree, and cast it in the entering of the gate of the city, and raised thereon a great heap of stones that remained unto today. Heap of stones. Sounds familiar? Look at chapter 7, verse 26. They raised over Achan, him, eh? they raised over Achan a great heap of stones. Remember that? 
And then you turn to chapter 4. What did Joshua do? Chapter 4, verse 7. Again, a heap of stones. These stones shall be for you a memorial unto the children of Israel. And then in verse 8, Joshua himself took 12 stones. Well, that Joshua commanded and the children of Israel took 12 stones. And Joshua himself in verse 9 took 12 stones also to set in the water. Heaps of stones again and again. What's the point? The first heap of stone in Jericho, in the river, was a reminder of victory. First time right. The heap of stones over Achan, reminder of what sin can cause in ourselves, to our family, to those around us, to church. The third heap of stones, the reminder of the second chance that they succeeded because they obeyed, they appreciated and they obeyed God all the way and they persevered. Now the reminder is, if there are second chances, don't fail again. Remember the first stack of stones as well. The best is not to hope for second chances, but obey right from the beginning. Let us rise to sing the closing hymn. 402, 402.